Cans are found all over. A lot of people just discard them, throw them on the side of the road. Uh, you can find a can about anywhere. And so we're going to take a look at some survival ideas using a can. And just, this is just a great free resource to be able to recycle these old cans. Another super easy project is to just take a can, draw a line right down the center, make a big capital I. Then you take a razor. Doesn't have to be precise, just gives you some guidelines. Now once I cut down the center, I take a little small pair of uh, scissors. Open up your little wings, fold them back. Take your small tea light candle. These are so inexpensive and you can buy them like packs of 50 really inexpensively. Set that in the bottom of your can and you have a little reflector. This will reflect the light and of course you can adjust these little wings as you want. Adjust your tab and use that as a hanger. So you can actually hang this in your tent, around your campsite, or if the power goes out, it makes it a lot better than just the tea light candle itself. Next we're going to make a can torch. Uh, you can use this for different things, for their light. Uh, you could even probably cook a little something on it or for warmth. And we're going to use olive oil and we're going to use a couple of napkins. You could probably use just one paper towel. First thing you want to do is roll up a couple of napkins together, good and tight. We're going to probably cut this to make it a little shorter. You want to fit it down in your can. Next, you need to go ahead and get the uh, olive oil on your wick. And this is really what this is going to be. It's just wick. Get it good and soaked. You can even use uh, cooking oil as well, which would probably be a little cheaper. <laughs> We're going to pour the olive oil in the can about halfway. Take your wick. Drop it down in. Then we're going to just light it. There we go. It'll burn for a good while. Uh, it's going to wick the oil out of the bottom of the can uh, through the paper towel or the uh, napkin in this case. Now we have a light, nice little light uh, for warmth, light, or obviously you could even cook a little something on here if you set it up right. One of my favorite uses is a penny can stove. This is really cool to make. It's a fun project. I've done a video on this. In fact, it's a pretty popular video. Uh, and I'm going to leave the link right here for you to check out. But putting this together, uh, even with the kids getting together and just doing this project, it's a great little way to have a, a portable stove and it's just for pennies. I mean, it's really cheap. Here we're using the little alcohol stove to make us some char cloth. But we're going to cut out some foil We'll cut out a long strip. We're going to make a survival whistle. This is a pretty cool little deal. And once you get a piece cut out, you're going to want to make two smaller pieces. One you're going to make is two inches long by three quarter inches wide. Let's take you a sharpie. We're going to go two inches. This doesn't have to be exact, but you want to be pretty close. You cut that piece out. The next piece is going to be one and a quarter inches long by a half inch. Okay, leave a small tab at the top and place your smaller piece across and then just bend back the two ears on the side. Then we're going to bend this little area back as well. It looks something like this. 
Now take a small knife and open up that in between and you're going to want to be real careful not to stab yourself. But just open it up. Then bring that lower area right here in front of the small piece, bring it down to a 90 degree angle, similar to this. Then just bring around the other area like this. What that's going to do, you're going to blow here and then you close off these two edges right here. Have a little bit of space in between and you'll need to adjust it and once you fiddle with it you'll be able to get it. It may take a minute or two. Got this closed off, the air on each side. I'm holding this finger down to keep pressure on it. Not a bad whistle. You can even leave these flattened out and keep them in your billfold if you ever just need it. It's something really handy, a whistle like this for signaling, uh, for danger. Just a great little item to have. Next, we're going to make a small hanger using a pop top. I use this cleaner area to make the little hook. So I'm going to come in, just snip it. You want to leave it kind of straight because what will happen is if you bend it to the side, it's weaker. Here, it's really strong. Then I'm going to just cut off this top area to give me a little bit of room. And then I can just expand it if I need to. There's an area up here that you're really going to need to clean up a little bit. It's a really thin area. The area around it is rolled, but this is just a flat area. So I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and just kind of bend it. And this will keep any kind of cordage from getting broke, getting cut or frayed. Plus it will give you a little more stability at the top. Just like that. Now you can use any cordage but we're going to use a paracord. Pull it through the top. Just make a nice little double knot. Okay you may look at that and say you know that's not much. But I just bought this set of nails and you know it's pretty weighty. Let's hook it. No problem at all. It'll lift it right up. So any kind of pack or anything else you want to get out of the way, even putting food up high to keep it away from animals, you're going to be able to use that little hook. Next, we're going to make an improvised fish hook. Now one of the things you want to do here is make sure not only did you have a sharp tip, but you also have a small uh, little barb. And this is a little bit tricky. There are a lot of uh, videos out there showing how to do this, and some of them are different. Uh, first thing is to go ahead and just snip this top part. And then, to get a really good hook, we're going to bring this up really high. And clip that. Then, I like to clip right at the center. Just go ahead and knock that out. And that will disable this area. So you're going to have already have a fish hook look already. Right here is where we're going to put our hole. But before we do that, we're going to bend this area back just a little bit. Give it a little bit more stability. Get it out of the way. Uh, the more you mess with this though, the more it's going to weaken the metal. So just be careful to keep it down. You can also reinforce this a little bit to be able to put your hole for your fishing line right there. Now you want to make your barb and you want to cut in at an angle. This is probably the most tricky part. Here you have a very sharp point. You have your barb which is really important. And now we're going to take a small awl or something to make a hole right here. You want to take something with a really sharp point and just make your hole. Once you get the hole made, take your, your needle nose pliers. Just make sure that you don't, you don't want to have any sharp edges for your line. Now you have a small hole where you can run your fishing line through or whatever you happen to have. And uh, this will be a great way. It is strong this direction. So uh, at least it will get you going, especially if you run out of fish hooks. Now the bottom of the can itself can be used as a reflector. And I'm going to use just some aluminum paste or polish. This is actually wheel polish. But you can also use sand. You can even use clay and just rub and polish that aluminum. Here's the bottom of the can. As you can see, it really takes on a decent polish 
and I'm going to show you a couple of uses. Here, this can be used as a signaling mirror. It can get pretty bright. Also, you'll notice from the reflection, if you get it close enough, it really gets an intense beam. If you had some char cloth, you could light a fire. In fact, I've seen a couple of instances on YouTube where they've actually lit fires with this. Guys, it's really amazing all the things that you can do with just normal common items and being able just to improvise to be able to do something uh, in a tough situation you know many of us think we keep things on hand at all times but you know as well as I do that you're always needing something and in an emergency situation that could really be serious this will hopefully just get you to think and uh, putting those items together for a survival situation be strong be of good courage God bless America long live the Republic I need to put out that light because it is huge and it's stinking up my shop with olive oil. <laughs> Also, if you'll notice from that, 